And now we make a brisk jump into, um, into the next uh, point of our program, and we will... Um, <coughs> The people who are in, in this room are usually uh, quite technical about uh, agriculture and so, and we haven't, uh, all of us at least, uh, the, the practice experience uh, out in their fingers, as next speaker will have. So I would like to introduce uh, Peter Borring with a warm applause today. Thank you very much. He will have the... He will have the impossible uh, mission to give us uh, in only 10 minutes uh, what's bad and good with, uh, with, with the tech, technique and uh, digital uh, things today in the agriculture. So are you a technical geek on your farm? Or? Uh, yes, <laughs> I'm sort of a technical geek, <laughs> but um, the farm size uh, limits the geekness. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, well, thank you uh, for being able. I, I thought uh, Per and Per uh, told me uh, you could say some words here on the conference, uh, and I thought my role is sort of a kind of a devil's advocate. I'm very humble that there in this uh, uh, local is uh, more people that have much, much more experience, practical experience of precision farming than what I have. But the first philosophical question is, what is precision farming? And uh, you can have a conference in one day of just that. I think many people put in many different kinds of perspectives on what it is. Uh, short more presentation on me. Uh, I have uh, a, a little farm in uh, Ostergötland. Uh, 200 hectares of arable farm, two companies, one that has organic farming, one that has conventional farming, and I'm um, uh, on the open flat land with quite good conditions for arable farming, and I also have a, a, a tenancy uh, south of the city of Linköping where it's more uh, wood-oriented and more wild animals and other challenges. Um, but I think that uh, I, I have had this kind of provoking headline here, toys for big boys, question mark. Uh, <laughs> I think that your presentation was very interesting here, on, 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 on thing. And uh, why have I put that? Well, uh, the average farm, I have 200 hectares. I think that's quite an average farm size for many farms in Sweden. If you look at how many farming enterprises really have, uh, but then many farmers uh, try to, to cooperate with uh, neighbors or, or uh, hiring machineries. But my question is precision agriculture only for big farms? In comparison, I made in co comparison with forestry. And I think it, one big issue is that, that uh, uh, or, or, or differences is that in, in forestry, the block, the main work is uh, made by uh, contractors that are uh, used for forestry companies or, or uh, other uh, parts uh, in the sector. And these contractors use their technology, new machines, very much, uh, very intensive for three, four, maybe sometimes five years, and then almost scrap, almost nothing at the second hand value. And therefore, they also can justify their to uh, tools for the uh, highest uh, technical levels, uh, the newest and most modern technical levels. And uh, in, in, in agriculture, we use machinery much more. A machine can have three or four lives. If it's a ranch, it can have almost how long life possible. Thank you. <laughs> I know because I use the second part of the life of your machine. <laughs> um, I take an example here. I would buy a new fertilizer spreader, a GPS control. Uh, Mr. Rolf uh, told us here earlier about the, the, the um, uh, satellite map where you can uh, make a, 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 a spreader chart uh, uh, and um, use for the spreader. And uh, we have this CropSat uh, uh, satellite uh, service in Sweden where you can make this uh, chart. Uh, and um, I want to use that CropSat and I want to use GPS on the headlands. And I also have an isobus on my tractor terminal. And um, with this condition, just to show you here, 
80 hectares of winter wheat, uh, crop fertilizer cost of 160 euros per hectare, total fertilizer cost of 12,800 euros. And we come to savings, not my account, that's uh, Sweden's, one of Sweden's most uh, known machinery advisors, Christy Johansson, that has an Excel calculator that told me that uh, almost 2% per year with GPS spreader. That's 256 euros, and that makes us 12 years payoff. If you already have a GPS and the VRA, the, it's a uh, variable rate application in the tractor. If you should invest in that, you also have um, a little more investment in. And then I have no consideration to uh, benefits of, of better crop quality, less load strain, and things like that. Um, precision farming, pros and cons, in a mid side farm perspective. Well, isobos is a good thought, but often uh, costs end up much. You have to lock up functions, you have cables, you have licenses, and things like that. Uh, in many cases, the cost of using the isobus is the same as a separate monitor uh, from your tool supplier. Uh, so uh, there's, you have to have that in, in, in consideration. And one experience is it's always more expensive than thirst expect, and your, your calculus also show that. Um, there is uh, clear environmental benefits. You already heard that from a more, more uh, uh, scientific way of put, b describing this. I describe it from a farmer's perspective, from my perspective. We have reduced time and uh, fuel and, and, and even small, small acreage, but uh, the cost, especially the initial costs, are high. Uh, farmer contractors, we are left in hands with the suppliers. This is, I think, one of the uh, toughest issues. We are left to the suppliers who they uh, cooperate with. If I have one color of the tractor, they say you have only use this and this tool, and we don't have enough farm advisors that are independent and for a, a, a justifiable cost can give us the advice. What tool to what tractor, for example? What cables for what tractor? Uh, to gain full benefit without the cost, you have to cooperate, of course, um, uh, or uh, hiring contractors or things like that. That's, as I see, for the only way forward. And what have I done? Is I, am I so critical so I haven't uh, done anything? Am I driving old equipment? No, I have invested in a new GPS. Uh, I also want to steer my tractor. Is it justifiable? Well, hardly. 10 years of payoff but uh, a lot of, of, on, on account of my interest. I think that I'm 42. I hopefully I will have at least 20 uh, crops more to have uh, as a farmer, 25 perhaps. So therefore I hope this spreader GPS will take me half the way to retirement at least. <laughs> well, I think that was my little introduction to the discussion. <laughs> The problem is that you and Imke has destroyed our uh, workshop today. We can the... take a longer coffee break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's very interesting to hear about it because I, I meet a lot of uh, farmers who say the same. You have to work and you have to pay off. So, um, but uh, do we have any questions to uh, Peter Boning or was it crystal clear? We have to be better when we develop new uh, digital and uh, technical Things. Yes? I think all we that are working, we also work a lot with electronics, but never ever forget whom we are making it for. And I think many, many people in the business, uh, they not do it only for the farmers. No. That reminds me too, uh, last week at, at a uh, Danish ag show, I talked to one of your salesmen, Christian. He told me we can see a lot of interest in variable seed rate from many customers, but we still have to tell them how to adjust their seed drill mechanically. I
back to basic also. We, don't care, we can never forget the basic. And I think sometimes we tend to forget the, uh, the basic perspective. Yes, and uh, with that said, we can say that uh, you can never, you can never change. You always need experienced uh, farmers' eye and, uh, and knowledge. Uh, so it's we can't just move it to technical things. We need to have knowledge about. We have farming. a saying: even the best hammer needs a good carpenter. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Okay, with that said, I think we said thank you to Peter, and he should also have a tractor, and that's definitely without uh, GPS. <laughs> it's even, there is no, no tractors like this anymore, it's a David Brown. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>